Hi everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I'm so excited to have you with me this evening. I see people from all over the country and all over the world. Tom is here working all the controls and he will be answering any questions or at least making note of your questions and yelling them to me so I can answer them. And tonight we are going to have a lot of fun because we are going to do a technique that was requested on last Wednesday night's live. We were talking about the thumping technique and a bunch of people had said, oh, can you do that technique? I don't know what that is, or I haven't seen that, or I can't remember it. So we decided tonight we would do the thumping technique. And I also have another technique to show you that uses the same kind of markers and it's called the dotting technique. So with that in mind, I just wanna bring up what tonight's topic is. Tonight we are talking about making the most of the moments, right? making the most of the moments. So today, Tom and I had kind of a sad morning because poor little Teddy had, um, she's having these bad neck spasms and they really hurt and she cries a lot. And we were kind of debating, what do we do? What do we do? I just, I'm sure all of you that have ever had a pet, a dog, a cat, a bunny, anything, the last thing in the world you wanna do is make that decision to take them in and have them put down. You just don't want to make the decision. We all pray that our pet will go to sleep peacefully and then just one day just not wake up. And we were just trying to decide what to do. And um, luckily the spasms passed and um, we've got some new medicine to try and we're going to take her in tomorrow for a good check with the vet. But scary times, you know, and, and you start to think about all those great moments. And um, the bad news is time flies. But the good news is you're the pilot. And, you know, with that in mind, we have to make the most of every single moment. Like it's the last, like enjoy the time right now. So hopefully that's what we're going to do tonight with Stamp and Chat. We're going to enjoy this time. We're going to put all the bad stuff out of our minds and we're going to do some crafting. So if we can flip over to the overhead, I want to show you what I'm going to use tonight. I'm going to start with the Nature's Touch Card Kit. This is now back in stock. We did have a little bit of a trouble with our um, little bit of trouble today with our website. Uh, we switched over to a new company and um, they're doing a great job. They're fixing a lot of things that you guys have been having some trouble with. But one of the things that's still not working right is the wait list. So I know it sent out a certain amount of emails, but not all of them. So if you've been waiting, this kit is now in stock. Also, the master layouts uh, one die set is now in stock and we've got a lot of the die sets in so if you're interested in those they are available so we're going to use this tonight we're going to use one of the um silhouette stamps and then we're going to use the elegant aster set from uh this is oh gosh this was an old kit from a long time ago see i never stopped using these stamps so even if you don't get them right away they do become available as regular stamp sets in our inventory and i keep using them so this set we're going to use for our second card for the dotting technique i'm going to put this aside and i'm going to get out the stamp set that i need from the kit i always keep all my uh, kit things, the stencil and all the pieces, bits and pieces together so that I can use them at, you know, all while I'm doing these, these demos. And then at the end, I put them all into their own stamp pockets and put any cardstock that's left away in the stencil. And I use these boxes. These boxes are amazing storage boxes for ink cubes. They fit, you can fit, oh, you can fit so many of them in here perfectly and it's nice and shallow. So, um, you know, they fit in there tight and they don't bounce around. So if you're looking for good ink storage, one of our old kit boxes that you might have in your collection will do it for the ink use. Okay, so for the first card that I wanna make tonight, I'm also going to be using this gauze background stamp. Um, I really like this one for so many reasons. I think it's a good masculine stamp. It doesn't have any flowers or any even flourishy things. It's just a good texture and it can be used with so many different kinds of cards. And then I'm going to be using this design from the stamp set. And is all that bright enough? You can see that okay? It looks good, Tom? Okay. 
And like I said, if you have any questions along the way, just ask them and Tom will be sure to answer. Now, if you have a stamp that's just a little bit big for the block with the grid, just a tiny bit because you know our edges are a little bit rounded, if you flip it over to the back, this side of the block, the the non-gridded side is just about two millimeters bigger than the other side because the edges are rounded, but not quite as rounded. So um, for some reason, this stamp fits perfectly on this four by three block on the back side. So that's what we're gonna use it for. We're gonna use it on the back of the block. Of course, you can always do this with your Misty if you want, but I'm gonna do it with a block today. Why did I move it? Ah, okay, all right. So, while you guys are coming in, it's so great to see all of you entering into the chat tonight, into our, uh, into our live. We just love seeing you. Okay, so I have a piece of cardstock here. The first one is cut three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. And I have a little craft ink cube. Now, I can use this or I can use the craft ink pad. So maybe I'll use the craft ink pad. You could use either one depending on what you want to do. And let me just show you both ways so you know how to do it depending on what you have. So here's the background stamp. So the first way that I'm going to use this is I'm going to take this ink pad and I'm going to drop it right into the center of this stamp and I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Just a little bit, make sure I get good contact. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock and I'm gonna lay it on top. And then I'm gonna rub all over the surface like that to make good contact. Then I'm gonna pick that up and you see what I did here? I just created like a blotch. And it doesn't matter that it's shallow in the center. That doesn't really matter at all. Let me grab another piece of cardstock here. I'm just going to use this scrap piece of cardstock to give you an idea of how else you can do this with an ink cube. So let me just clean that. Now, if I wanted to do something with the ink cube, I could do something like here's the craft ink cube. I could just do like three or four things like that going down and then do the same thing. And that gives me a different look. But basically, I'm just trying to create some kind of blotchy center. It's just going to ground my image. So that's why I wanted to do that. And I think that's fun. If you don't have a stamp that's textured like that, you can just use an ink pad. Ink pads especially because you can really kind of wiggle them a little bit and get that, you know, that kind of shape. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. Dye pigment? Um, the craft, okay, so we have three different kinds of ink in our collection. We have dye ink, which the craft is dye ink. We also have pigment ink. Our white and ivory are pigment inks. And then we have the amalgam inks, which are a little bit more of a hybrid. They've got a couple of different properties that make them great for coloring with any kind of medium. So this is a dye ink. It dries super fast. It doesn't matter. You can just like, you know, practically touch it the second that you stamp it and it won't uh, run or smear at all. So these are our dye ink pads. You can also watercolor with these. You can do some water techniques with them and uh, they're real fun ink. And of course we have the most colors in the dye ink because that is our whole rainbow of colors. The amalgam inks are more for stamping and coloring. So we have six colors of those. And pigment ink is an opaque ink. We only have white and ivory because that's ink that you want to be able to stamp on dark colors and still be able to see it. It's not a transparent ink like a, um, like a dye ink. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to try some prickly pear. And this is the thumping technique. And if you hear somebody coming in, I hear my daughter, Alicia, opening up our garage door. So she might just be bouncing in here. She actually is wonderful. She went and got medicine for Teddy, picked it up and is bringing it over so that we didn't have to miss our live tonight. Okay, so for this technique, the thumping technique, one thing that you want to do is you want to pick a variety of colors that go nicely together. So I'm going to start with prickly pear, and that's going to be my lightest color. And I'm going to be using that as my base color that I'm going to stamp all over this stamp. 
Then you're going to pick some markers, and they can be the Tombow water-based markers. Maybe some of you have Stampin' Up! water-based markers. You can use those. You can use Marvy water-based markers, whatever you have. You can also use Zig Clean Color brush markers, or you can use these wonderful Arteza markers. These are really something. I love these. This, these have been a lot of fun, the Arteza markers. So it's really a matter of what markers you have close by. They need to be a water base or watercolor marker. And you want to have your ink pad being your lightest of the colors. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the prickly pear. I'll try this Arteza marker. Now they don't have colors. So let me see. Um, yeah, they don't really have colors on here. How do you know what color it is? Well, I guess you just look at the bottom and say, yeah, I like that color. So I'm gonna go with that color and I'm gonna go with maybe a little bit of a green. So we'll try this and see how it looks. And if we don't like it, we'll flip it over and we'll try it the other side with some of these Zig Clean Color brush markers. So to start, I'm going to take the um, prickly pear and I'm going to ink up my entire stamp. Now, if this is the first time you're using a stamp out of a stamp set, you might want to stamp it a couple times just to make sure you're getting a good impression before you do this. You can see it's really taking the ink beautifully because I've used this so much. Okay, so that's your first step. Now, the second step is to take a marker like this darker one and I'm going to thump. And thumping is just bouncing on the stamp. So thump, 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 like you're like a bunny just jumping, hopping all over this stamp. Okay. And then also make sure you do the stems. You want to get the stems in there. And then I'm going to use this green one and I'm going to do a little bit of green in there. Not quite as much, but I'm gonna add it in just to have some of that color in there. Okay. Now that that stamp is all inked up, I'm gonna take this image here and I'm going to stamp right into the center of it. I'm gonna go just a little bit higher. We'll see how that looks. Okay, see how pretty that is? Look at all that lovely detail I got in there. And it just makes a solid stamp look so interesting. This would be a beautiful kind of card to do. You don't have to have any greetings on these at all. This is a beautiful kind of card to do if you want to start making gift sets of cards to give to people for the holidays. Do a couple different designs and layer them up on a piece of you know matting cardstock, like in this case, I'm going to use the charcoal brown, and then I would put that maybe on the prickly pear like that, and that is just a simple note card. So you could do a total boxed set of these with prickly pear envelopes, or maybe an assortment of different uh, card bases, and that is such a pretty botanical looking card. So I'm going to just clean this stamp. Any questions out there, Tom? Uh, Susan wants to know if you could do a video on the Pop Art Flowers multi step. Yes, I can, Susan, but I do want you to know that I have two really good videos on YouTube using that stamp set that shows you exactly how to line them up. And it is a really, really well put together video. So if you need help finding that, just post it in the group, in our Facebook group, the Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends group. And I'll be more than happy to find it and I'll link it for you. I'll link both videos because they're really good videos to teach you how to use that stamp set. Okay, so I could do a greeting on this, but I almost don't want to because it's so pretty. Maybe I'll do a greeting on the inside. How about if I do that and just leave that outside simple like that? I think I'll do that for this first card. Okay. So there's something about the gauze mixing together with the, um, the thumping that really, really creates just such a nice look. 
This is a really nice autumn card too. And that's what I love about the stamps in this kit is they're great for autumn too. They're gonna to take you all the way into the autumn season. Okay, let me flip this around. Do you think Alicia is waiting out in the garage because she's afraid to interrupt the live? <laughs> she might know I'm live and doesn't want to interrupt, but if you're out there, Alicia, and you're watching, you can come in. <laughs> All right, so I have a piece of cardstock here that I'm gonna put on the inside. Let me just tape that down. Now I could layer it if I really wanna be fancy. How about if I do that? Let me get a different piece of cardstock here. And I'm going to cut two layers the same size. So I'm gonna cut one. <laughs> what is that? Well, that's the medicine. Did she leave? Oh, I was going to put her on camera. Okay. So she must have known we were live. So I cut that three and a half by four and three quarters. And then I'm taking this one from three and a half up one eighth of an inch to three and five eighths. And then I'm taking that from four and three quarters of an inch up to four and seven eighths. You know, there are some thicker line art stamps that it will work with that don't look too bad, but the solid silhouette kind of images really give you the most, um, the most beautiful results, I think. But I will show you in the Elegant Asters, I'm gonna use the Butterfly. And that actually is kind of a stamp that I would consider in between a solid image and an open image. Okay, so that's gonna be the inside of my card. And let's see what I can do here for this. Hmm, I could put a little thumped tree in there. Maybe I'll do that. Or I should have probably stamped it first, but I can, I can fix that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll use these flowers and I will do the same thumping technique for the inside of the card. And then to save myself, I'm gonna use a piece of scrap paper here that I showed you guys this on. I'm just gonna cut it in half and I will block off those areas. So what I'll do is let's get the ink pads that I need first. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here and this here. So this way I can stamp on there and I don't have to worry about, I can stamp off and not worry about it getting on the card base. Okay, so I'm gonna use those same exact colors again. I'm gonna start with prickly pear. And the Arteza markers, like I said, they're gorgeous colors. They just don't have names on them, unless I'm missing them somewhere, but there's a lot of tiny, oh, you know what? No, no, there's no. Come on. <laughs> well, I don't see them. If anybody has Arteza markers and you know the names, help me out. Okay, so I'm using this. I'm going to say it's like a dark brick color. I'm just bouncing that on there. And I'm doing it over the whole thing, even though I don't exactly know what uh, part of this is actually going to be on the card. And then I'm adding this deep olivey green into the mix. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp that just off the card, like right here. There we go. There we go. See, we can modify things when we need to in this live. And I'm gonna clean that right away. Now, the only thing that I noticed is the Artezas aren't really um, staining the stamps too much, but the Zig clean color ones, the pinks do and the reds do. I don't mind that because I think a stain stamp is a loved stamp, so that doesn't bother me. I was playing with some of the brighter colors and you can see that it's stained pink because I was using some of the pinks and reds earlier with this. I don't mind it. Sometimes I actually like it because it's not solid, so I can still see through it, but it does make it easier for me to actually find the stamp if I drop it. It makes it easier for me to see where it's going to stamp 
when I'm putting it on with my Misty before I actually add ink. So I don't mind a little bit of staining. It's not a bad thing. All right, I'm going to put this away. And now ooh, I want to add a greeting. So I'm going to just do thinking of you. I think that would be a good one. Or with sympathy would be good. I always, I always hate to make sympathy cards when I need them. I'd rather make them ahead of time, like when I'm being creative and not thinking anything sad. And then when I need a sympathy card, it's already done. So because I use charcoal brown as my darker color, I am going to... Um, your Artezas have a name and number, Lolly? Mine don't. What's wrong with mine? Are they defective? <laughs> I don't see a name and number on here. <laughs> I'll have to look on their website and see if I can figure out which ones mine are. So I'm going to use the uh, charcoal brown. This is my favorite ink color for stamping when I'm doing warm tones. It's the closest thing to black without being black. Because if you use black ink and you're doing all these warm tones and you've got this charcoal brown layer, it just looks a little bit too stark. This is just the right tone for this, so I love it. Okay, and I'm gonna use my block here and I'm just gonna put that right up here. Just gently stamp it, there we go. Thinking of you. So that might be a good inside, inside sentiment for just making generic cards for somebody. Or you can leave the insides totally blank with just that little floral design so they can decide what card it's going to be, a birthday card, a sympathy card, or whatever. Um, and they can just handwrite whatever they want it to be. So there is my first card. I hope you guys like that one. So now let's do the dotting technique. This is a little bit more um, complicated. Not the technique at all is not complicated, but the card idea that I want to make is a little more complicated. So I'm going to, um, can I use this for that? Let me just see if, if I can use this scrap for this butterfly because I want to use the, but oh yeah, I want to use the butterfly stamp for this. And this butterfly has all kinds of embossing powder all over him. So if you if your stamps ever lose their stick, it's usually because they've got something on the back. If you just clean them with your tidy towel, um, they will stick once again, no problem. Okay. So this one I want to do with some black embossing powder. So I'm going to start with the embossing magic pad. And then... I've got a Versamark pad here. I'm going to ink this up with Versamark. Get that nice and inky. You can also use pigment ink for this if you want, not dye ink, but pigment ink. It stays wet longer so that you can still emboss. Or you can use the Gina K Designs embossing ink pad. So I guess you can kind of see lightly that my Versamark is dirty, so it left a little bit of an impression there. Now I'm going to take some of the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Black Embossing Powder. Yeah, I wonder if maybe when you buy the Arteza markers in a set that they don't have names, and then if you buy them singly, they do. <sighs> wow, I got embossing powder everywhere. Let's see if I can do a little better. All right, there we go. And I am going to cut this out, so I'm not worried if there's some little um, black flecks of embossing powder in other spots. But I do want to get it off of my mat here because if it cooks on my mat, this is not any kind of fancy mat. This is actually just shelf liner that I bought at Bed Bath & Beyond, so I'm not gonna be able to get that off. So when you're embossing, you always kinda wanna heat up your embossing tool first, and that just heats it up and makes the cardstock less likely to warp. And as I'm going on here, I wanna welcome anybody who's just joined us to Stamp and Chat. I'm Gina Kay, and you are watching a video tonight with a couple of different coloring techniques. The first technique that we did was called the thumping technique. And this technique is called the dotting technique. All right, so let's emboss this. Okay. That's pretty good. So 
somebody in our group was asking about, um, they were having trouble with their embossing powder saying that it wouldn't melt. Um, and they were having trouble getting it to work. One other thing I'm gonna show you too is if you do get black flecks and you don't want them on there, like you're not gonna cut this out, you can use the mono sand eraser for that and it will erase those little stray embossing powder flecks that you don't want in different spots. It just kind of sands them off. I'm not gonna work too hard on that, but that's a good little tool to have in your arsenal. So one of the reasons why um, this lovely crafter may be having trouble is sometimes when you're embossing, you think you're blow drying your hair, so you're doing this. And that doesn't work. When you're embossing, you want to hold it straight down until that powder melts. You want to see the powder melt and you can move it slowly. So I think sometimes when people first get a heat tool and they haven't watched any videos or they, maybe even you watch the videos, but you don't really notice it, that um, the person who's embossing is actually holding that tool right in one spot. If you're doing this like you're blow drying your hair, it just never melts. The other th reason why embossing powder sometimes doesn't work well is it's old. Embossing powder actually does have a lifespan so you kind of want to make sure that you uh, are working within the lifespan. I've had my embossing powder for over a year, so it's not that short of a lifespan. But, you know, some people have had embossing powder in their collection for 20 years and they wonder why it doesn't work. Okay, so the first color I'm going to use here is yellow. Actually, I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a nice bright color. So I'm going to do that. And I am going to just do dots, random dots, all over this butterfly. Just like this. I'm not filling the whole thing up, but I'm just adding random dots all over. I actually um, stumbled upon this technique. I knew I was going to do the thumping technique because we talked about it, but I... <laughs> I was watching a YouTube video and my own video got suggested to me and it was a video that I did on this technique and I thought, oh, I want to add that to my video. Let's see, would you guys like me to get a little bit closer, a little bit more zoomed in? I can do that. I think I can do that. Here we go. Let's go a little closer there so you can see this better. Okay, so I'm going to test this color. That's really close to my last color. Let's try this one. What kind of cardstock is that? This is just the Gina K Designs uh, Layering Weight White. And I'm going to use this brush. This is just orange, it's called. So I'm going to add this color in there. And it doesn't matter. Some of the dots overlap. I kind of like dots. And I think I'm going to do a dotty background, too. Dots sometimes are very fun. Do you have a line from Boston powders? Yes, we do. We've got several colors in our collection. We've got the fine detail in white, black, gold, silver, and clear. And then we have some other fun colors like rose gold and copper. And we have something called brass band, which is really shiny gold. We have one called, do we have one called champagne? Or it's something... Oh, I, I don't remember all the colors, but if you go under our website and you look up um, embossing powders, you'll find them all. Okay, and then this last color I'm going to use is light green. And I'm going to fill in a little bit more here. This is kind of fun. It just It's just a different way to color, and it it's really interesting. You know, when you see it, you're like, oh, wait. That's different because there's a lot going on, but it's not your traditional coloring where you're blending or using Gamsol. It's just kind of interesting and kind of crazy. Okay. And I like that little bit of white showing through too. I think that makes it interesting as well. What marker is that? This one's called light green. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So once again, the colors I used were orange, yellow, and light green. 
orange, yellow, and light green. Yeah, it does kind of have a stained glass look, doesn't it? I think I'm going to go back over it with that one that I said was kind of light. And this is called bright yellow. And I think I'll just fill in a little bit more in there just to kind of seal up some of the white. This is one of those colors that is in between that yellow and orange and probably blend them together pretty nicely. But yeah, it does kind of look like a stained glass window. This butterfly is really fun to color. It's got lots of thick lines, which is nice because, um, you know, you've got that nice, if you were doing a stained glass look, it almost looks like that iron, those, what's that iron called? The soldering iron that's in there in stained glass. I don't know. My dad used to do a lot of stained glass. I don't know what it's called, but, um, yeah, that does kind of have that look. Okay. So that's going to be the butterfly. Now I think, I think I'm going to put this all on some jelly bean green cardstock. So I want to do a background technique that's going to be pretty with this. Let's see what I can do. I'm wondering what colors, maybe like a bright orange, although maybe something a little bit softer would work. So you guys saw me doing this very, very early on in our lives. I have a piece of bubble wrap. And if you've ever ordered from Gina K Designs, you might have bubble wrap too. Well, I'm going to do a bubble wrap background. Super easy technique to do. And I think I'm trying to decide what color to do. I could actually do a rainbow. Let me do that. I have a yellow and an orange. I could do a yellow and orange. So let's do, let's do wild dandelion and sweet mango. I think they're going to be good colors for this background. So it won't be actual rainbow rainbow, but it'll be like a color blend. So I'll start with the yellow. I'll do a little, little yellow up here, a little yellow down here. And then I'll get the orange in there, blend a little orange in there. Oh, the worst is when one of the bubbles is popped. Come on. Okay, <laughs> let me do something down here too. Okay, all right, we'll see how this goes. This bubble wrap has been around for a long time, so it may uh, may have too much popped parts to it. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that down here, and then I'm just gonna put a piece of cardstock on top. The black cardstock's good because you're not even gonna really see the ink on here, plus I can use the other side for a a background or whatever. Okay, here we go. That's kind of cool. Let me do another one. I'm going to do a different one on the back. I feel like it needs more yellow in there. Well, first, let me just check and see if I like that. Do you guys like that butterfly on there? Hmm. Maybe something a little more subtle would be better. I think I'm going to go for more subtle. So when you have bubble wrap, you just clean it with a tidy towel, just like you would. Boy, that's an interesting sound. I wonder if birds would respond to that. Sounds like bird calls. Okay. <laughs> Tom's looking at me. If you can see the way Tom looks at me in a live, um, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use some craft instead. I'm gonna try that because I think this might be a little more subtle. Bubble wrap is so fun. I'm gonna put that down there. Get my black cardstock again. You can just give it a little extra press to make sure it makes contact with any of the bubbles that are a little deflated. Ah, there we go. I feel like I want that one. Could I be so good as to do that? Probably not. I missed one though. Oh, that's Sandy Beach. Oh my goodness. Where'd my craft go? Put something else there? Like what? <laughs> A little stamp? Just one stamp in there? <laughs> oh, I could do the vellum. Well, you put single hearts in places. I do, but I, I really just, 
Oh, see, you did. <laughs> no more suggestions. I don't know that I can do this. I might have to do another piece. I can't, another stamp? Let's try your idea and see how that looks, Tom. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's try it and see. <laughs> I'm gonna find a heart. Let's see, I have a heart. All right, we're gonna try Tom's idea. Well. <laughs> we're gonna put a heart there. We're gonna... <laughs> I'm just making fun of you now. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, right? All right, we're going to try it. Ready? That's all right. I've been fading you out. What do you think? <laughs> You've been fading me out. What do you think? Do you like that, Tom? I do. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to save this, and this is going to be a card for you. <laughs> it's about how I feel right now. <laughs> all right, I'm cutting another one down real quick here. <laughs> so if that happens it's probably a piece of like a bubble somewhere on your bubble wrap <laughs> that's um everybody's liking your heart idea tom <laughs> i know i know <laughs> so why don't you just um why don't you just put all the comments that support your idea up now <laughs> So I'm gonna use the other side of this bubble wrap. I actually think that um, I had a popped bubble in there that was not making it work as well. All right, here we go. Put it there. Are you sharing all the comments? <laughs> or are there none? <laughs> Nobody likes it but you? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, so I'm really putting a little extra pressure on there. <laughs> I saw that comment twice. <laughs> I think you're cheating. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. There we go. That should do it. Please work. All right. That's good enough because we've got something there. So this is going to be it. Let me get rid of this bubble. <laughs> before it destroys my marriage. All right, so now I like that. I think that that's pretty, it's soft. Uh, are you still sharing the comments? <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna trim this one down to the right size. So again, <laughs> uh, this one was four and three quarters, so we'll do four and seven eighths and three and a half, so we'll do three and five eighths. Now, that being said, I want you guys to know to know that <laughs> I'm laughing because I see the comments coming up. <laughs> Tom's feeling pretty good about himself right now. <laughs> oh no, I cut this wrong. Oh no, I didn't, I cut this wrong. So um, I want you guys to know that the master layouts are now back in stock. And now that they're back in stock, I'm gonna be able to, um, do a video with a bunch of different card layouts using that. And if you are looking for ideas and layouts, I created a document that's over in our Facebook group that will show you the different layouts that you can use with the master layouts set. Okay, so we're gonna put this together. It's not even a lot of bubble wrap's gonna show when I'm done this card, to be honest, but I felt like it needed something. And I like how kind of light the texture on that other one was, that craft cardstock. You guys really like that, huh? Let me show Tom's idea. There it is. <laughs> All right. We should get Tom stamping. I'm gonna figure out what would you like to stamp, Tom? What kinds of what kind of technique would you like to try? Um, let's do wood grain. You want to do wood graining in a video? That would be fun. Definitely. All right. So here we go. I'm going to actually back out of this a little bit here. Maybe we can do this with, with me showing you what I'm doing. Okay. So I am going to cut out a 
oh, I'm going to cut out an oval. So these are the double stitched ovals and single stitched ovals. So I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do this gigantic one here. And it's going to cover most of that area. I'm going to do a white one and a black one. So the double stitched I'm going to do in white. And if you use the white, uh, if you use the double stitch, that's going to be one eighth of an inch smaller than the single stitched. So you can do either one of these as a single oval, and they're both pretty close to the same. Um, Getting pads everywhere to the same size. But if you put them together, they layer beautifully. You get that nice little one eighth of an inch shadow layer that I love. So there is the single stitched one. And now I'm going to cut a double stitched one using some black onyx ink. Black onyx ink. Black onyx cardstock. Oh my gosh, I'm all confused now thinking about Tom <laughs> stamping. <laughs> And how we're going to make that happen. We need to do it. Did somebody say something with hearts, Tom, they want you to do? Yes, anything. They'll, anything? They'll take anything. They'll take anything with you? All right. We should try that. What about for Wednesday? You want to do something on Wednesday? All right. <laughs> you, you're there. You can just walk right over here. All right. That sounds like a good plan. All right. Tom on Wednesday figure out something to do. He wants to do wood graining. So I think we can do a couple different fun wood graining techniques and make some masculine cards. Masculine cards are always good to make anyway, because we never have enough ideas for those. So I think that's now, what we'll do. If I'm making a card, I don't want to make a masculine card. You don't? No. What do you want to make? Like Why a do I want to make a masculine card? Who am I going to send that to? Well, that's, that's true. Okay, so you want to make a floral card? We can still do wood graining and do a pretty floral design. Let's do <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here's how I'm going to stamp this. And I'm sorry for that ring there. Let me see if I can. No, oh, it doesn't help. All right. We'll just have to leave the ring. I'll, I'll cover it with this so it's not quite as... Uh, glary. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stamp a greeting on here and to make sure that it doesn't move and that I get another shot. Yes, I will help him. I will help him stamp. I don't know that he needs it though. He's actually a very creative person. So we'll see what comes up. All right. So I'm going to tape that down using a little bit of the Gina K Designs tape runner. It's a tape runner that it, it adheres really well to cardstock, but it doesn't really leave much of a mark on my Misty. And then I want to do this greeting. You are such a gift to me. Oh, they follow your dreams. They know the way. Which one do you like, Tom? Follow your dreams. They know the way. Or you are such a gift to me. You are such a gift to me. All right. Follow your dreams. It is. <laughs> I was really hoping you were getting my signals over here, but you didn't look up. <laughs> Follow your dreams. They know the way. Oh, my gosh, this night. All right, so I'm going to use the, um, the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink for this. And this is the dye ink, so it's going to dry very quickly. And I wanted to use the Misty just in case I have to stamp it a second time. And I'm going to uh, use a paper towel. You can use a microfiber cloth. Or if you're wearing long sleeves, you can use your sleeves to make sure you get great contact with that stamp. All right, we're goofy tonight. We are just goofy tonight. Okay, I'm goofy tonight. Tom's just doing his thing like he's always doing, cool back there behind the controls, and I am goofy. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to die cut again. I wanna die cut this butterfly out. So first, I will adhere these two together. And now I feel like I am so far away from you guys. So let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see the tricks going on here, the magic. I might do, I might do some rhinestones or something, too. Feeling very sparkly tonight. OK. So that is going to go on to my card right there. Now, let's cut out the butterfly. 
So instead of me zooming, um, instead of me zooming, Tom, maybe you can just flip the camera to my front shot so I can say hi to everybody who just joined us. Oh, I'll flip the camera. Can you flip the camera? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome. If you're new, I'm Gina Kay, and this is Stampin' Chat with Gina and Tom. Tom is in the background chatting as well. So I'm going to use this die to cut out my butterfly that I dotted. And I'm not going to worry too much about it being perfect. Um, but what I am going to do is a lot of you have asked me for all of my die cutting tips and tricks that I've done in the lives. So I think coming up soon, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a few five minute quick tip kind of videos. Um, and I'm definitely gonna do one on some of my different die cutting tips and tricks. So look for that coming soon. I think five minutes is, is good. Just enough time for you guys to just jump in and remember something that maybe I talked about. And uh, hopefully that will help a lot. Okay, so we can go back to the overhead now. Uh, I got a good cut on that butterfly just by using a little purple tape. But I got lucky that time. That doesn't always work out so well. Sometimes I need to use my um, my other method. Okay, so let me let me bring it in a little closer here for you. All right. So I'm going to adhere this panel, this little oval panel, right into the center of this card, and you see it kind of hid all of my mess ups there. And then this butterfly is going to go down here. I like that. I like that a lot. Then I think I'll put a couple little sequins in there, but I'm going to pop that butterfly up. I have some foam squares laying around here somewhere, and I'm going to grab just a couple of those. Let's see what I have. I'm going to put one here and one here, and then I'm going to put one at the bottom of each wing, too. There we go. And then I'm going to peel off the liners. Is that what somebody told us the other night these were called, Tom? Liners? Protective liners? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> were you even watching? <laughs> you were listening? Backing. <laughs> backing, paper backing. Paper. I don't know what they're called. Release paper. Release paper, yes. And this one is not releasing. And part of it is because I keep cutting my nails. I don't know why. I used to have really nice long nails. And lately I just cut them short and put, you know, just clear polish on them. And I just leave them. That Thank you. Release paper. That's the ticket. Um, so now I'm going to add some little sequins because we have time for sequins let me find my other card does this card need sequins too do we need any sequins on this card i don't know i like both of these cards tonight i didn't expect to like uh i didn't expect this one to come out like this and i'm really jazzed about the thumping technique but the dotting technique is fun too they're both fun all right so let me grab some sequins by the way our disco ball sequins are finally in production and they're going to be back in stock soon so i think i'll use disco ball because their disco ball is a fun color oh this is not disco ball what am i doing here it is which weight paper did you use for the stamping on the butterfly and the setting on the ovals for everything other than the card bases i tend to use the 80 pound layering weight white because it's nice and light and it allows you like on this one, I mean, think of all the layers I have in here. So um, this one is still a light card. You don't have to add any extra postage for it. So um, I tend to use the 80 pound layering weight, the pure luxury white on just about everything except card bases. All right, so I'm gonna put one here, one down here and one up here. We'll see how that looks. I like threes, but I may have to do more than three here. We'll see. 
pretty, pretty. This is the Marvy Jewel Picker, by the way. If anybody wanted to know what that is. I could put five, but three is nice. I like that. All right, should I put any on here? I don't know, I almost don't want to. Let me just lay them on and see how they look. Because this is such like a soft kind of, well, they are pretty though, aren't they? No, I don't think so. What do you think? Oh, do we have a troll, Tom, in the room? A troll? Yeah, somebody said we have a troll. Somebody might have. Uh... We had a troll. Oh, did you delete him? And just so you know, if if every once in a while by accident, if somebody said there's certain keywords that trigger blocking, and so I think the other night somebody was saying a really super nice comment about you know, not being racist or something. And the word racist triggered the, the blocking and the person got blocked. And we felt terrible for that because it was such a nice person. So we're really sorry if that was you. Okay, maybe I will add a few sequins on here just to jazz it up a little bit. Like, I have to add more than, what do you think of that? Will that do it? I'm gonna do that. Oh gosh, I'm always so unsure, but but I like the idea of just the um, just the three. I like threes and fives. Although one time I made a card and I, it only had room for two flowers. I do that sometimes with two flowers, and then I just think about it all night. Did I do the right thing? Should I have added an extra flower? They're all saying no. No, no to the sequence. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so the gauze one needs five. All right, we'll put five in there. One. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where to put the other ones. I think I'm going to leave it at three for now. If we decide, I'll look at it a little bit and decide. Yeah, probably the gauze one didn't need the sequins, but I threw them on there anyway. You don't live. Well, this isn't a sympathy card, though. This is a thinking of you card. So, yeah, I, w I don't, I'm not crazy about, like, sequins with, uh, or glitter. I mean, gosh, you know, I think I, one time I made a foil card for a sympathy card and it was like, ta-da, with sympathy. And that just didn't work. So I ended up not sending it. So, you know, glitz and glitter is fun, but for certain things, right? But these are okay. This is a thinking of you card. And this one is a, a card of encouragement. <laughs> All right. Well, there are my two finished cards for the night. I'm not going to touch them anymore because I know I'll screw it up. I'll just do too much. You know, where you just do that one extra thing that you shouldn't have done. And what card sequence did you use? I used Disco Ball. These are the Disco Ball sequins that we have on our website. And we are out. We've been out of stock for a while. But these are actually, um, I just got a video from our manufacturer. And he was showing me them getting cut on the machine. It's really cool. Um, so they're, they're making them for us right now. So they should be back in stock soon. All right. Well, let's go back to the front shot. So this was so much fun tonight. Tom and I always have so much fun with you guys and you really brightened up our night. It was a rough day and Tom and I are, um, really, really thinking about, uh, just, you know, treasuring every moment with our little Teddy, our little puppy. Um, and uh, hoping for another good day tomorrow. So I do have a final quote for the night. The, the, the theme tonight was, do we have that banner? The theme tonight was making the most of the moments. And my final quote tonight is, appreciate life as it happens. Moments will soon pass and you will wish you had treasured them more. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We enjoyed every moment of you, every moment with you. We will be back on Monday night, next Monday night. Oh, wait, is today Monday? Oh, so we'll be back Wednesday night. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. We'll be back Wednesday night, and we're going to get Tom to stamp something on Wednesday night. We're going to get him to do a little wood graining and maybe even, Tom, you want to try coloring with Gamsol? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
We're gonna get him to color with Gamsol. Get ready, get your colored pencils and your Gamsol out. <laughs> Oh, good. All right, you guys, you have a wonderful day tomorrow, and we will be back on Wednesday. We love you all. Have a great night. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.